Every vessel, be it a surface ship or a submarine, goes through a testing period known as sea trials, or a shakedown cruise, following their fitting out. The purpose is to test the general seaworthiness of the vessel, including its safety equipment, speed, and maneuverability, before it's delivered and formally commissioned into service. There are a lot of things that could go wrong on a submarine, so sea trials are very important. But you know things are about to go very wrong when the Admiral has a problem with his underwear. Let's hear a story about that. Before we begin this episode, I just want you to know that while the subject has long since passed away, the interviewee has asked to remain anonymous just for reasons of privacy. Hello everyone, welcome back to Down Periscope, Up Periscope, Tales of Submarine Tours. I'm Tim, your host, and today we have our guest tour guide, one of the many volunteer tour guides who also happens to be the former captain of a nuclear-powered submarine, or several in fact. Now, today we're going to talk about someone known as the kindly old gentleman, or the father of the nuclear navy. Yes, I'm referring to Admiral Hyman Rickover, a man whose very name probably sends feelings of trepidation into many, a man who interviewed thousands of officer candidates for nuclear power school, and I believe he went out on the shakedown runs of nuclear-powered submarines. Now, there are many adjectives which have been used to describe Rickover and kindly is probably not popular among them. Most would probably say, I think, abrasive, acerbic, blunt, you might say. But our good captain here has a rather interesting story about the Admiral. Captain. Well, it was uh, my pleasure to uh, have gone to sea twice with Admiral Rickover. Now, Admiral Rickover from the Nautilus on, it was his policy to ride and observe every nuclear power ship on its initial sea trials after it was built. And uh, these sea trials generally, uh, the way they took place is uh, the Admiral would arrive the night before the ship was ready to get underway. And then the ship would get underway early in the morning, sometimes when it was dark outside. And go to sea and conduct those trials, which uh, would generally take a little over two days. Now, on one particular trial, um, everything was going smoothly. The Admiral had boarded the ship. And then in the morning, just as the ship was getting ready to back out from the pier at its construction yard, the uh, Chief of the boat comes up to the bridge and says, Captain, we have a problem. Well, what is it? Admiral Rickover did not bring his spare underwear. Well, I thought for a couple of minutes, and since I was close to the size of Admiral Rickover, I told the Chief of the boat, We'll go down to my uh, cabin, and underneath the bunk you will find my spare and underwear and see if that suffices. He did that, and um, I heard nothing after that. The sea trials went uh, very fine. The Admiral uh, made uh, his usual speech after the trials. We came into port. The Admiral disembarked disembarked, and then uh, we continued our uh, subsequent sea trials. So, I did not think anything about it, except about two weeks later, I received in the mail a package. 
and it was marked from Naval Sea Systems Command. Small package. I opened it up, and inside was a letter and two pairs of Navy issue white underwear, very similar to what I lent to Admiral Rick over. And in that, the Admiral basically said, Thank you for the underwear and good luck on your sea trial. <laughs> so that's just one little story. And, it, and I think the reason uh, I was told that he didn't bring his underwear and this is his wife was uh, gone at the time and she was not available to uh, pack clothes that he needed. Well, at least the Admiral was good enough to return the favor and give you back two new pairs, huh? <laughs> yes, he was. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, that's one of those stories about uh, Admiral Rickover and uh, people. Well, sometimes I uh, have a little concern or fear when the Admiral is around, but, uh, you know, he um, he had this ability to, uh, to really uh, think about the people who uh, served under him. And uh, it did not always show, but it was there. And indeed, they say that probably due to Rickover, the U.S. Navy has never lost any submarine or ship to a nuclear accident. They have an unparalleled safety record when it comes to nuclear powered. Unfortunately, the same cannot be said for the civilian sector or the Soviets or Russians. So for all of his faults, at least Rickover was very big on safety and responsibility. Well, certainly he was. He, he set the standards and uh, we still follow him today. Well, thank you, Captain, for that story. I think people really enjoy it. I sure enjoy it. I have some other stories too, but uh, save them for another time. On a further note, we have actually debated as to why exactly the chief of the boat came to the captain with such a seemingly trivial matter. The captain of a vessel is the person in charge of its operations, everything and everyone on board the vessel. So you want to go to the captain if there is a problem concerning that and be conscious of not wasting the captain's time. Why the chief of the boat couldn't have just solved the problem at his level with the admiral's underwear himself is unknown. While Rickover passed away before my time, I'll conclude here with some thoughts on the man. Rickover served for some 63 years on active duty in the U.S. Navy, literally one of the longest serving sailors in the history of the Navy, and almost 30 of those years were at flag rank as an admiral. He was known to be a workaholic and extremely intelligent. By some standards, he was not an easy man to get along with, and some would no doubt argue that by the time Rickover was forcibly retired in 1982, at the age of 82, he was getting a bit long in the tooth. Still, Rickover was known for having little time for mediocrity and zero tolerance for stupidity. During his tenure, Rickover emphasized high-quality education and personal responsibility in those who would operate nuclear-powered vessels. By extension, those two views can apply to the citizens of the United States itself. But to avoid getting too political, that's all I'll say about that. In 1961, at the 87th Congress, as part of the Joint Committee on Atomic Energy, Radiation Safety, and Regulation, Rickover actually had the following to say, quote, Responsibility is a unique concept. You may share it with others, but your portion is not diminished. You may delegate it, but it is still with you. If responsibility is rightfully yours, no evasion or ignorance or passing the blame can shift the burden to someone else. Unless you can point your finger at the man who is responsible when something goes wrong, then you have never had anyone really responsible. 